Hi there, welcome to Chemistry 3007 at the University of Western Australia. In the previous lectures we were talking about uh, the properties of anti-symmetrizers and we proved two interesting properties. And now we're going to use that, those properties that we proved, to calculate the overlap between two determinant wave functions. Okay, so we're going to assume um, that the determinant wave function is made up of a product of Hartree orbitals, each of which is orthonormal. Okay, we're restricting it to that case. Not any old orbitals, they're orthonormal orbitals. In that case, the overlap of the wave function, determinant wave function with itself, integrated, is equal to the product of the individual overlaps of each orbital that makes up this product wave function, this anti-symmetrized product wave function. So it's equal to this product of the first orbital with itself, the inner product of the second with itself, and so on and so forth, and the product of all these terms. Now all of these terms are normalized, so uh, the, that's equal to 1, phi 2 with itself is 1, and so on. So the product of this is just 1 times 1 times 1 n times, which gives you 1. That's cool. Now we have, remember, n factorial terms squared in here. It's remarkable that this thing comes out to be 1. So let's see how that works. We're going to need our previous results. Here's the proof. So we just write everything out. So here is a product of anti-symmetrized phi times anti-symmetrized phi. Now we have a product of two anti-symmetrizers. We don't need to consider the anti-symmetrizer on the left. So let's write out the product of orbitals with their coordinates, and on the right we have the anti-symmetrizer, as we had before, without its prefactor. And we have again the product of individual orbitals. Okay, so there's nothing there that uh, is new that we haven't proved. What do we do now? What we do now is we consider all possible permutations, starting with the identity permutation and then swapping 1 and 2 and 1 and 3 and 2 and 3 and we do that n factorial times. Yes, we are going to do that. So let's do it. So if PU is equal to the identity permutation, which is doing nothing, that's an allowed permutation, this is what we get. This is 1, the phase factor of a 0 swap, if 0 is an even number, is 1, so that disappears. And we end up with phi 1 integrated with phi 1, phi 2 integrated with phi 2, etc, etc, phi n integrated with phi n. And I'm showing the integration variables over here. Now each of these is orthonormal by assumption. So this is a product of 1 times 1 times 1, which equals 1. That's great. Wow. Well, if the first term's equal to 1, it must be that all the remaining terms are equal to 0. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this theorem. But let's assume that we don't know that theorem. So we have already the one here. Let's consider the next permutation. The next permutation I'm going to consider is swapping 1 and 2. So let's swap the coordinates on the right-hand side, x1 and x2. OK, so now phi2 becomes a coordinate phi2 of x1, and phi1 becomes phi1 of x2. And don't forget, this is one swap, so we need a negative sign. So I've put a negative sign over here. Phi 2 is a function of x1. That means when we integrate it, we have to integrate it with phi 1 on the left-hand side because phi 1 is a function of x1. Okay, right, likewise, phi uh, 1 on the right-hand side here now becomes a function of x2. So that has to be integrated on the left-hand side with phi 2 x2. So we have a negative sign, phi1 x1 integrated with phi2 x2, and then phi2 x2 integrated with phi1 x2. So essentially what happens is the 1 and the 2 are swapped on the right-hand side with a negative sign. But wait, if we integrate phi1 with phi2, those two things are orthogonal. So that's equal to 0, and that's equal to 0. So the whole product is equal to 0. Okay, that's great. 
So if we do swap of one and two, we end up with mismatching orbitals on the left and right. And because they're mismatching, they end up being zero. Now here comes the trick. The trick is for all other permutations, we will always get a mismatch somewhere along the line. And with the mismatch of orbitals, they integrate to zero. So no matter what of these n factorial permutations we do, they're all zero except for the very first one where we do nothing. Fantastic, we've proved it. Well, if there's anything that this theorem shows, it shows that it's very convenient to use molecular orbitals which are orthonormal, which have this property of orthogonality and normalization. See you later.